Hello, everyone. Absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. uh, right, that's enough. No, no. <laughs> So welcome to Frontier Expo 2017! Live from here east in London, we have a very special show for you guys tonight. And we love you too. I wonder how long that's gonna go on for tonight, guys. That's, that's enough, you've had your fun now, okay? It's our time for fun. Uh, all right, so yes, live from here east in London, it's been an absolutely incredible special day for us here. Uh, you guys all here in the audience, I think, I th I, have you had a good time today? Have you had a, yeah, yeah. Well, Yes, good, all affirmative. All right, uh, we also have, um, uh, people watching at home, and so I do want to say a good hello to those guys as well. Thank you so much for joining us from home. If you couldn't make it, I'm sorry you couldn't be here. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, we've got a great show for you tonight as well with uh, an absolutely amazing host, a great lineup of developer guests who are going to be coming to join me on stage and talk about some of the games that Frontier Developments are working on, uh, including Jurassic World Evolution, yeah, yeah, Planet Coaster. And some other game we've never heard of. No, 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 no. And uh, Elite Dangerous, of course. Yeah. Okay, so, but first of all, uh, I want to invite uh, two of the leading visionaries uh, from Frontier Developments um, to the stage to talk about the future of Frontier as a, as a whole. Uh, so please, a huge warm welcome to the Chief Executive Officer of Frontier Developments, David Braben. Johnny Watts. Absolutely amazing stuff. What an, a, a, a delightful audience we've got here. Well, incredible. incredible. Absolutely incredible. It, it's been a, a, such an overwhelming day, I think, in terms of positivity. We've had such a good time. Yeah, I think the atmosphere has been so good, and that's thanks to all these guys, as well as all the people behind the scenes who work really hard. Yeah, it's, Make this happen. it's been something really special. Thank you. Um, you. You too. I mean, we should talk about Frontier. You two uh, have a huge wealth, both between you and individually, uh, of, of experience in the video games industry. You've worked together for a very long. How many years have you worked together for now? I've been working with David for almost 19 years. Wow. And, and so did you ever feel when you were first starting out, um, did you ever feel that you would be doing something like this, a, a, an expo all about Frontier? It's funny, in, um, in some ways it feels like going full circle, because I remember back in 1984 doing an Acorn user event in London, um, <laughs> where Acorn was a very small company and we're doing this, and it felt like we were doing the event, even though it was Acorn. But now this is us, and it's so much bigger, so much, you know, so much dare I say, slicker, down to these great people behind the scenes who made it happen, you know, including yourself, obviously. But what's wonderful is that... <laughs> <laughs> David... <laughs> but, but what is great is it's that feeling of full circle, you know, but it is wonderful to be here and doing this and having such great games that we're, we're showing here, which are due to the wonderful team, a lot of whom are here already, the rest watching it back at home, who have worked really hard to make it happen. Yeah, so I, I remember back to being interviewed by David 19 years ago, and uh, I was sitting at this really small pine table in a, in a farm, in the middle of nowhere, just outside Cambridge. And if you asked me then, would we be doing this when there was only eight of us there? I'd say, not a chance, <laughs> not a chance. But with every game that we've made, I think we've got closer. And sitting in this chair, I would say I'm almost feeling comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so to, what about today? Have you, uh, it's been, like I said, uh, numerous times. We've had a lovely day. Uh, have you had any highlights for yourselves? Uh, well, I, it's, it's been brilliant. One of the highlights is the Frontier Museum. I hope you guys have had a, had a go at some of those games. And uh, putting it together, it was like a, it was a roller coaster of, of, of emotions. No pun intended. No laughs needed. <laughs> Given. <laughs> and uh, I sort of remember back to all the heated creative debates, all the late nights, but every moment was uh, absolutely joyous. So, yeah, happy, happy times. Frontier Museum rocks. It's funny, going just to echo that, uh, going through the loft, trying to find things. You go, oh, we need this. You know, it's amazing how a lot of the old kit doesn't work with any of the modern monitors and trying to get it to work. And so some people have been really helpful there. But also the nostalgia of dusting things off that had not looked at or played for quite a while. But I think, to me, um, the highlight was um, 
seeing the wonderful, you know, seeing William Baines talking about the, the chemistry of Thargoids on a stage. You know, I thought, wow, that's amazing. Um, we met at a dinner at Jesus College, and uh, I'm delighted that it's progressed. So we've done this event. And, and not to belittle the other talks, the other amazing talks we've had to, uh, today. So, you know, thanks to those guys as well. Yeah, yeah. De definitely. I I'd echo that. All the experts, um, William, Jack, Brendan, they just speak to the authentic authenticity mm -hmm. as to what I think Frontier is about. It's always about detail, believable worlds. You know, and, and uh, I just want to say, yeah, th thank you to the experts. Brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Uh, and, for, and for the people at home as well who, who, may, who won't have been able to see those talks, I think we are actually chopping them up and putting them up onto our YouTube channels as well uh, at some point, so you will be able to get to see those. But yeah, please, a round of applause for our, our, our speakers. <laughs> so wonderful. So wonderful. So it's been uh, not just an exciting day, but an exciting few years for Frontier, I, I think. Um, do you think that, that, obviously, we've been moving from sort of just strength to strength, really, uh, as a company? Oh, no question. I mean, the, the, um, the last few years particularly have been excellent. Uh, moving from a, a long period of time working with great publishers, but now publishing on our own, it's, it's fantastic. The freedom it's given us and the, some of the great games we've, we've made. But if this is just the start. We're at the beginning of a process. That's what it, it genuinely feels like. You know, um, looking at the, the first game now, been out for more than three years, Elite Dangerous. Um, you know, just we're doing lots of great things, th great things going forward. Planet Coaster still in its first year, but just you know, looking at all the new things and some of the exciting things I'm itching to spoil for, <laughs> for later, for both Elite Dangerous and for Planet Coaster. Um, you know, but we will be showing a roadmap for Elite Dangerous later. We'll be showing some new things for Planet Coaster and, of course, some gameplay for Jurassic World, which we're very excited um, about. roadmap for Elite Dangerous? There. I did. So pause for applause here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, amazing, amazing year, amazing three years, amazing 19 years, amazing yeah. 23 years, loads of amazing years. <laughs> the thing I, I, I want to say, take, take this opportunity, I, they, I'm not allowed to speak that often, so I'm going to <laughs> go, go for it here. So I want to say, <laughs> I want to say a, a really big thank you to, to all, the, all the Frontier pe people, some are here, some are at home. These guys, they make the impossible possible, so I want to just really do a heartfelt yeah. thanks. You guys are 100% absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. The dev team back at home. Yeah. Well, ab absolutely. I'd, well, I'd, I'd like to echo it as well. I mean, I've, through my career, as, uh, uh, since being at Frontier, I've ended up feeling awkward taking credit for these, these amazing people's works. You know, and um, you, some will have already seen the, um, in, on the second stage some of the talks today where people you know, just see the amount of effort goes in to all of our games to make them happen and give them the richness they have. So, yes, from me as well, a big thank you to those people uh, who hopefully are watching now. Yeah, and of course um, the awesome community uh, play yeah. uh, a huge part. Uh, I mean, I'm a bit biased. I love every, well, every single member of our community, of course, uh, without exception. Uh, well, just, just, to, just to go to that, I mean, the, the, the community are fantastic. You know, it's wonderful the way the community firstly helped us get to where we, were, where we are because we wouldn't be here without the support, or not just buying games, but all of the interaction we've had with, with all of you for a very long time, even before we came, became self-published, you know, that, that interaction, which is really rich. We do look at the forums regularly. I look every day pretty well. I'm on the forums and saying, oh, what's this? And oh, you do. And badgering people, so <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> but the, the community is truly amazing, and you know, we really appreciate. And also, you know, coming here today, we appreciate the effort and dedication that all of you put into it. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. We wouldn't be making games as good as I think we're making if it wasn't for you guys. Um, I, I'm really into all, all, the, all, the, all the creations, so again, like Planet Coaster a little bit, and, and you know, 140,000 workshop items, just so much creativity, incredible. But I also like some of the stories which have been generated in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy, you know, the, the, the fuel rats, the, what, what, how amazing is that? I was actually talking to someone. Yeah, go on, yeah. Go, go for it. Hooray for fuel rats. 
and I want to spend a little bit just, just digressing and going into that. This is new. This is not planned, not scripted or anything like that. But I, I was None of this to, is scripted, John. I was talking to someone, and, I, and what they do is you strip down your ship, you make sure you haven't got any shields, any weapons. And so I said, well, what happens if, it, if it's a trap? And uh, you, you go out there, you know, all these you know, thousands of light years, and someone attacks you, and says, oh, well, we just die. How, <laughs> how altruistic. You know, I almost had a tear in my eye listening to that. What an amazing set of dudes. Just, uh, and girls, yeah. sorry, yes, I'm, uh, absolutely, everyone. Um, but yeah, I'd also maybe. like, it, it, you know, they're, they're such a great group. Um, but also, I mean, today, There's talking everyone. to Canon Research as well, another great group who I know are here. <laughs> Hutton Truckers. <laughs> <laughs> now... Just to avoid a very long list of so great say, yeah, should people. We, should we very quickly move on, otherwise we Well, I'd just like to thank you for all the other groups, <laughs> yeah. because you yeah, know, it, it's, I, I don't, I don't mean know. not to list out people, but I'm being yeah. hurried along. So <laughs> thank you to all those other groups as well, which a lot of whom I've met online or met here. Yeah. So uh, moving forwards, uh, we have, uh, I mean, we're going to use the word exciting quite a lot, I think, for the next uh, hour, hour and a bit. But, um, That's my word. I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure you have lots of sort of five-year, ten-year plans, but we uh, unfortunately can't spend the next hour talking about those. As David we've got some could, video actually. games to talk about. Um, I'm sure you probably could, but we, we, we probably shouldn't. Um, but what does the, uh, in short, what does the, uh, the future hold for Frontier? The future is fantastic. I mean, the, we've got ourselves into this great position, and... You know, looking forward, firstly, for each of the three games we've talked about, I mean, it's still very early for Jurassic World Evolution, but absolutely phenomenally excited about it. Um, obviously, Elite Dangerous is going very well. We've got the roadmap, as I mentioned earlier, um, to come, which we'll talk about. You know, lots of really good things. But, it, you know, as I said at the start, it still feels like the start. You know, there's so much to do in each of those games and things that, that we aren't even going to talk about today going forward, which are really exciting. We're talking about a lot today, by the way. <laughs> um, but there are things that, you know, that this is the whole point of, of, of long five-year, ten-year plans um, that... You know, obviously these things change dy dynamically, but, but having that sort of richness that we can call on mm -hmm. is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's reassuring to hear that I'll still have a job in five years. Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Please let me come. <laughs> um, all right, uh, uh, Johnny, sorry if you haven't... Oh, yeah, uh, well, I think all the ideas that I hear from the community... All the lists, thousands of lists, all the ideas yes. I, I, I see. And my lists. Uh, da well, da David's <laughs> list is the longest list. You can't beat, you can't, can't beat David. All the lists from the teams. I, I think we need multiple 10-year plans to realize all them. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, great stuff. Um, so uh, today we have uh, a packed uh, next hour or so, like I said, um, to talk about some of the content coming up. So what can we expect to Yes, see? the teams are going to be up here. Uh, revealing just, uh, or I'm going to use the word amazing, Do amazing it. things, yeah. amazing things. Uh, so first off, we've got um, the Jurassic World Evolution team. Hey! <laughs> and without spoiling anything, they might show some in-game stuff, but I'll let them do that. <laughs> hopefully you enjoy it. And then, of course, Planet Coaster. So they're going to be talking about the next, the next update. I'm really excited by that. And, uh, David. and for Elite Dangerous, the, we're loads of things we're talking about. I'm not, I would itching to spoil them. <laughs> um, but the, the roadmap's interesting, but what's in it is what people get excited about. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So uh, please, a huge round of applause for David Braven and Johnny Watson. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. So... Thank you. Let's start things off then. It is my pleasure to, uh, to introduce to everyone here and uh, everyone watching at home. Um, well, let's have a look at Frontier's uh, latest game announcement. It's uh, Jurassic World Evolution. the stage, Head of Animation, Nick Rogers. Game Director. 
Dr. Michael Brooks and lead designer Andrew Fletcher. Oh, come on, make him step around you. That's, yeah, okay. Great stuff. So, firstly, Jurassic World. Yep. What an amazing thing to work on. Did you ever think that you would be working on something like this when you started at Frontier? Uh, nothing quite on, uh, on this scale, I have to say. I mean, I love the film, so I love dinosaurs as a, as a young kid. I imagine most people do. Had the toys, read books about them. But it wasn't until Jurassic Park that I actually saw them kind of brought to life properly. I think with films before then, there were bad guys and you know monsters that tended to appear every now and again. But when he saw that amazing scene with the herds going across by the lake, I mean, that just brought it to life from then end, and that's it. I just fell in love with them ever since. And now, working on the game. How cool is that? Amazing. Yeah, really, really cool. <laughs> I saw some, yeah, I love, I love dinos like, uh, like Mike here as a kid, you know, had the books, had the, the top trumps, had all the Jurassic Park merch, and uh, you know, when the film came out, it was just the blockbuster of that era, you know, it was so amazing. Saw it multiple times, and, uh, and to be working on the game, I mean, from a design perspective, it's there's so many great, rich themes in that series to, to pick out and to, uh, you know, hopefully let players enjoy for themselves. And then there's the spectacle, which, you know, you can't beat dinosaurs for spectacle, really. Yeah, and I'm absolutely over the moon to be here. I mean, um, when I first saw the film all the way back when I was uh, 10 years old, it was, it was absolutely blew my mind, and it's the main reason I actually went on to become an animator. So uh, I, I used to see the dinosaurs come to life in the old Ray Harryhausen films, but that I'd never seen anything quite like what they managed to get across in Jurassic Park. And obviously, in sort of 1993, CGI wasn't really a big thing at all. So I had no idea what was going on. And as I started to learn more and more animation, uh, more and more about animation, I just got absolutely obsessed with it. And I already completely loved dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, so I just worked and worked at it. And uh, here I am, sort of 20 odd years later, working on a, on a Jurassic, Jurassic World, World game. game. So yeah, it, it's absolutely fantastic. It really is a dream come true for me. A dream come true, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Had about a mission, Nick Rogers, living his dream at Frontier Developments. Everyone's living the dream at Frontier Developments. Right, I'm, I'm over the moon. <laughs> so, I mean, what makes, uh, talking of Frontier, um, mm. uh, what, what do you think makes Frontier a perfect fit for working on Jurassic World Evolution? So, there's, there's a couple of reasons, I think. I mean, the first one is that the games we make, we have a passion for the, for the genre or the topic they're in. So, we're making them really dangerous, you know, people love space, astronomy, and that the passion was there in the team. With Planet Coaster, I mean, we've got a pedigree of doing a, so the theme park games anyway, but there's a huge love for theme parks and roller coasters in the team that made that. And, you know, for Jurassic World, who doesn't love dinosaurs? I mean, the, the enthusiasm on the team is just beyond this world. But sort of more than that, I think um, you also look at the history of the games that we've made at Frontier. Um, and when I joined the company back in 2003, we were working on a game called Dog's Life, which if you've been to the museum, you might have had a little play at. And in that, you basically controlled a dog called Jake, and since then, we've done the wild expansion for RC3, we've done Zoo Tycoon, we've done Kinect Smalls. So we've got a history of just bringing animals to life in computer games. Mm -hmm. And dinosaurs is the ultimate challenge, but one we're very happy to be taking on. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, uh, build your own Jurassic World. That is the, I think it was uh, on the trailer. Uh, yeah, that's the sort of tagline. Yeah, that's yeah. the tagline, yeah. Used yeah. on our social media as well. Uh, I think that uh, people have been waiting uh, people at home, uh, I know we're watching, and maybe some of you guys in the audience, waiting for quite a, a while for a game just like this, you know, a game where you build your own Jurassic World. Uh, so why don't we tell people actually what the game's going to be about? <laughs> yeah, well, build your own Jurassic World, you know, we think this is the, the core fantasy, really, that's in the movies. You have, you're in an incredible island setting, you can bioengineer amazing dinosaurs, um, attract visitors and guests, try to keep them safe, and build a business, you know, build a dinosaur enterprise. That's, that's kind of what we, we see in the films. That's what we want to give players to, uh, to play with themselves. Well, I, th I think we've actually got a taste of that as well. Why don't we take yeah. a look at the very first in-game screenshot of Jurassic World Evolution? So what do you think there? Yeah, what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, round of applause, please. <laughs> it, it looks absolutely amazing. I think everyone was just stunned. Yes, <laughs> for a second, yeah. In, so this is an in-game screenshot? This is an in-engine in, in in yeah, screenshot, yeah. yeah. That's right. So, so this is an example of the kind of island you might be, be playing on. You know, you've got some building infrastructure in the back there. It's the workings of your park. You've got dinosaurs roaming, of course. Um, and the thing I wanted to point out about this is, you know, 
it's not just one island. You've got, we're going to base the game across five islands. So that's the five deaths, the Cinco Muertes, as uh, fans will know them. And um, they're the kind of core kind of locations in the game. There's also Isla Nublar, um, but we're not going to reveal too much about how that fits into the game just yet. But the cool thing about having these multiple islands is each one has its own characteristics and its own kind of challenges to throw at the player. Um, and of course, each one represents a kind of clean slate as well. So every time you kind of expand your empire, you expand your operation strength, you kind of, you're able to gain access to more resources, more dinosaurs, of course. And, um, and you can approach potentially each new island in a new way. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can kind of approach your dinosaur facilities. Yeah, there's sort of the, um, I think you mentioned to me earlier about the, the three different paths yep. as well that you can, you can take. So I think we're about to see the best screenshot you're ever going to see. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most impressive slide of the entire... It, it is. <laughs> we crashed with that long and hard. <clears throat> um, so the ultimate aim for the player is to become the preeminent dinosaur management expert. And there's three paths to do that, as you can see. So eloquently illustrated, entertainment, security, <laughs> and science. Uh, so entertainment, that sort of follows the, uh, the sort of the dream of John Hammond and then Claire, Claire Deering in um, Jurassic World, where you, the, the dinosaurs are attractions. You're basically using them to attract tourists and make money that way. With security, it's about how fierce you can get your dinosaurs, you know, what you can, how dangerous they can become, and also being able to manage such dangerous animals. So there's a very big risk reward thing there. And then with the science, it's more about understanding uh, how they lived, what they were. So they all balance out. And the idea is that you can follow all three and you get this nice sort of balanced, um, or you can just follow one of the paths. It's, it's, it's completely up to you. Um, however, what you're doing is you're assembling these team of experts that represent each of these. Uh, and so ideally, you want all three on your side, but they have competing reputations. So they, are, they want resources from you. So that brings a bit more challenge into, into the gameplay. And they do that through um, contracts. So essentially, they give you tasks that they want to do. Um, so these are specific targeted things, like create a complete genome for a specific dinosaur, or make sure you've constructed certain facilities, or you know, that's the sort of gameplay challenges that, that come up. Yeah, so before we move on, I think you've got a point, Andrew. I just want to say, that was a lot of information there. So please, a round of applause for Mike Brooks, please. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of information in like one minute. Thank you. <laughs> You've got some more to tell us about, Andy, even more information. <laughs> sure, so that's, that's kind of the, some of the core management um, concepts in the game. Um, but there's this cool layer of management above that, which is like managing disasters. So we all know from the movies, things don't always go to plan. In fact, they usually don't go to plan. And this is something we really want to kind of represent in the game and have as a kind of engaging gameplay system. So. Um, on the islands, you'll come across various kind of emergency situations, like one of them might be heavy tropical storms that will play havoc for your infrastructure of your park <laughs> in very obvious ways yeah. that are very bad for you. Are these are in-engine shots again, sorry? Kind sorry. Of oh, these are in-game screen shots, yeah, yep. so these are taken, taken from the game. So this will kind of, you know, cause damage in your park. It will cause, uh, you know, upset for your dinosaurs, which you don't want, obviously, when you've got visitors and guests roaming around. Uh, and the key thing here is really is to make this part of the gameplay loop, you know, to make it so that players are trying to mitigate these problems as much as possible. When they happen, they can respond to them uh, and react, which is really cool. And then actually, you yeah, go on and pick up the pieces and keep their business running. Um, so it's a kind of, it's a cool kind of counterpoint to the building gameplay that you normally have in management games. Well, well we, we've seen this tried a few times in, in the movies, uh, people trying to make a Jurassic World. Yeah. And it doesn't usually go very well. No, um, said, it, it, it very rarely goes well. It often yeah. goes wrong. But uh, we do want to give the players the opportunity to realize that original Jurassic Park dream of uh, John Hammond and Claire Deering and put the, that, in, that inherent peril of looking after giant dinosaurs into the hands of our community and, and see what they would do and see how they, how they could manage to run one of those. But, yeah, I mean, you, you are all clearly... Um, fans of the Jurassic, you know, law as well. So, how do you go about uh, making sure that that law makes its way into uh, into our game as well? So, when we uh, started, uh, well, before we started making the game, we did a huge amount of research. We rewatched the films over and over again, read reread the books. It was life. terrible. It, it, you know, it, I, I, <laughs> we have hard jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, visiting fan sites that you know where people just 
endlessly analyze the film and just learnt about the law and the history of you know, the, of the stories that they told. And we really wanted to make sure that we brought that into the game. Um, so one of the ways that we're doing it, there will be others, but for now we're just talking about uh, is the engine database. And as you play the game, you unlock little snippets of information. Some of that's helpful to guiding gameplay, uh, but others are all about how things link with the, the films that went before. So you just keep unlocking this little codex of information. Fascinating stuff. Yeah, it, it looks really interesting. Um, so uh, we by talking well. We have bioengineering the dinosaurs as well. Um, is that something? Because in the in the trailer, you, know, you see the lab at the start and then the cracking egg with the eye poking through. Is that something? Are we going to have the dinosaurs all the way from the very beginning? Are we going to work with them all the way? So so yeah, you you will be bioengineering the dinosaurs yourself. You start at the start. You will be sending fossil dig teams around the world to real life fossil sites, um, getting back your dinosaur bones extracting the DNA from them, building the genome. Uh, you could even make slight adjustments to the genome to uh, adapt the dinosaur attributes as well. Um, and really, it's about, again, trying to key into the, the science of the movies. You know, it's such a, such a core thing that underpins those films, and we want it to be represented in this game. Um, and of course, once you've kind of got your completed genome, you need to incubate your dino and uh, let it free in your park. Yeah. Well, I, I think we've got another screenshot as we well, uh, moving on to the, the hatchery. There we go. So once the dinosaur is mature enough to be released onto the island, um, that's done all done through the hatchery. Um, but the, um, the dinosaurs are then a living thing that you have to look after. I mean, if you remember back in uh, the first film, you've got the lovely scene with uh, the vet, Jerry um, Harding, um, with his sick triceratops. And, you know, that can happen if you don't look after those dinosaurs properly. So you need to make sure that you take preventative action, um, keep them as healthy as possible. Um, but even if you get everything right, as uh, Ian Malcolm says, sometimes life finds a way. Just <laughs> 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 need that little nudge every now and again. <laughs> Round of applause for movie reference. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, two, well done. Two in one sentence. Uh, so uh, I think that we, we're, all, um, we're all very self-obsessed. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> now, humans are quite self-obsessed, but of course the real stars of the show in, in Jurassic World and Jurassic Park are the, the dinosaurs, isn't it, Nick? It absolutely is the dinosaurs. So uh, <laughs> while this is, a, this is a management game at heart, we really wanted to get the dinosaurs right. So when we first started uh, looking to, to make this game, we set our art targets and our animation targets squarely at the quality of the film. We didn't just want to make the, the best dinosaurs that we'd seen in video games in the past. We wanted to make some of the best dinosaurs that people have seen full stop. And that, that was a nice, crazy high expectation to set my, my animation team. They enjoyed that. Um, and as we can see here, um, this... Uh, th this is a render of one of the actual in-game assets. Uh, this is our Parasaurolophus, and this is exactly the same as the model that you'll see in the actual game. Ooh, it's uh, an incredibly oh. high level of detail. Our, our character artists have really outdone themselves and created yeah. truly amazing uh, levels of detail with these. Um, we've worked very closely with our partners at Universal, uh, and they've actually been kind enough to send us some models actually from the Jurassic World films, which we've retopologized and put directly into our game as well. So there's a level of authenticity um, that is, the, you know, it's on par with the films. It's absolutely perfect. And then this incredible character art is combined with uh, some of the best animators in the industry, uh, some incredible audio guys, and some fascinating uh, behavior and locomotion code that's, that's come across to create some of the most believable animals we've ever done. And as Michael alluded to earlier, we've got over 10 years' experience of doing animal animation. It's something we do really well. It's the reason I came to Frontier, actually, was when we started working on Connectimals. Oh, wow. I was blown away with the kind of animation work that we managed to do there, the, how believable the, the animals were in that. Uh, and we've managed to take all of that, and this is really the accumulation of all this work. And so we're going to put it all together and hopefully create some, uh, some creatures in this game that surpass anything Frontier's ever done before. Well, they look like this, right? They look like this. Well, yeah. this is it. This is the T-Rex I mean, in the amazing. game. <laughs> They've done all right. Yeah. They've done all right. But uh, I'm pretty sure that um, people might want to see all this uh, come together and maybe have a look at Jurassic World Evolution. Mike? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, 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 can't, I, can't. I don't know. I think we need a bit more enthusiasm. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to see it? Oh, I can't Michael. hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. So uh, what we're going to see now is some in-game footage uh, from one of the islands. Uh, it's Isla Matanceros uh, and some of the uh, incredible stars of the show. Let's have a look.
I think you can give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Please show your appreciation. I think it's absolutely, you know, in game. That's what's going to look in game already. It's amazing. And I can't wait to see what everybody at home thinks of that as well. And, and you know, picking each part and having a look through all the amazing shots that we see in there. And, and, we, and we can't wait, I'm sure you agree, to share more about Jurassic World Evolution in the coming months. Of course. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic stuff. So. Please, a huge round of applause for our Jurassic World Evolution guests here today. Mick Rogers. Andy Fletcher. And Michael Brooks. Yes. Very exciting. I got to stand on stage while the Jurassic Park music played. <laughs> so, next up. It's time for us all to uh, embrace some chief beef belief. <laughs> While we talk about what's coming next with Planet Coaster. Welcome to the stage, lead artist Sam Denny. <laughs> lead gameplay Hiding, of course, over there because I called you gameplay programmer when I actually. You know, it's, just it's okay. We'll let you. So you let me off the hook. Okay. Yeah. I'm allowed to make Brilliant. one mistake, but only one Should mistake. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> let's get to it then. I mean, well, first of all, what do you think of, of, of our little dinosaurs then? Do you know it's extraordinary? I mean, I, I'm sure there's a, there's a few people that have been saying, "Wait until Jurassic World. You know, it's going to blow your mind." And and. Uh, uh, to, to follow that is amazing. To, to, to imagine that, you know, when we first made Gulpy the dinosaur, <laughs> uh, we'd end up <laughs> with... with like, this come a long way, isn't it? <laughs> it's just so little, far. They're, just, they're just a little bit more terrifying than Gulpy, aren't they? <laughs> just a little, <laughs> tiny little bit, yeah. So, uh, getting right to it, uh, if you don't mind, Sam, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. It's yeah, like, uh, no I was just going to say, it's just like, it, it, it's the stuff that I loved when I was a kid, and it makes me feel like mm. a kid again watching it, you know. And the talk we had earlier today was amazing about, you know, the, the evolution of dinosaurs, sort of, you know, paleontology and stuff like that. And, you know, that's all going into that game. You can see it, and it's great. Yeah, I love it. Well, we're here to talk about Planet Coaster, of course. Any Planet Coaster uh, players in the, in, in the room? <laughs> Loads of them. Excellent. Good. I'm glad you're here. Great. And, uh, um, it's been a, a great year, I think, Planet Coaster. First of all, I can only just believe that it's actually only just been a year. It feels yeah. like both a very, very long time since we had the uh, alpha come out, but also it feels like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, as well. I think you and I, or you and I, were on the first alpha streams together. Yeah, it's, it it's, it's come a, a very, very uh, long way, and I think we have... Well, we have a little video, uh, which is a sort of a celebration of this, an audit of joy. Wait, 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 I, yeah, I think, I think if you had a room full of happiness and you got the accountant in, right? This is what he would come up with. Or just be amazing stuff. Just have a watch of this. Oh, no, no, you do that. It's amazing. Boom.
extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. Just carry on nodding at each other now, just going, yeah. yes, 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 extraordinary. Yes, yeah. some amazing stats and... and uh, well, it just, just the, um, uh, I mean, Johnny alluded to it earlier on, with, with 100, over, what, 140,000 pieces on Steam Workshop alone. And when you consider that each of those is, you know, made up of the wonderful little blocks in the, mod in the modular boom system, that's like, you know, I'm, I'm an artist, so I'm terrible at maths, but that's at least... 14 billion yeah, yeah. something or other. <laughs> it's, it's extraordinary, you know, uh, numbers. So well done to anybody building this stuff. Yeah, so it's, it seems to have gone um, from strength to strength uh, for Planet Coaster uh, with every update that we've, we've put in there. Uh, what do you think is the sort of the secret sauce that makes Planet Coaster so successful? What's the secret um, ingredient? Well, it's, uh, yeah. there's, there's, there's a thing at Frontier, I think. If, if you imagine Frontier as this uh, big, beautiful beast, it has kind of two aspects to it. <laughs> Um, shield and snake. <laughs> Two snakes coming together over a shield. That's a, a reference to some people, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> at home, that means nothing. Uh, it's very wonderful. Uh, anyway, it the point so is, well. so, so uh, as a company, we have this uh, uh, incredible drive for authenticity and, and detail and code and making that work and being efficient and, and clever with the way that we code stuff. And then the other side, we've got some incredibly talented, creative people who just bring beautiful artwork to it. And they, they pound and they swirl about each other and we argue and everything. But neither side wins. It kind of gets together and it makes this beautiful thing. And I think that actually Planet Coaster is a real example. It's a pinnacle of that moment mm -hmm. where, where we just collaborate together. Yeah, I think the kind of the, we have this wonderful team of incredibly talented people who sit and, sit and work so hard on, on our games. And it really kind of shines through with fantastic artists and animators and programmers and designers. Loads of people who are... Who are not here with us tonight, and those who are in the audience, I can see a few. It yeah. really is, really is fantastic, and that enthusiasm and effort comes together to bring, as John says, the two beasts together. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and we got Planet Coaster. Yeah, some of those guys were with me right at the start when we were doing Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 and 3, and seeing the transition from 2D to 3D was something like, it was quite a scary prospect, yeah. but when it, we realised that it was just... Absolutely mind blowing, but and I thought that I'd never get that a development experience again. You know that kind of wow. You know this is something special, and it happened with Planet Coaster, and it was you know it's credit to the team. And like I say, we still got some of the guys who worked on those early um, titles with us, and they you know big thanks to them. They're just just the energy that comes out of the, that comes out of that lovely mix of the experience. Yeah. And, the, and the new fresh talent coming through, I think, is kind of really... It's got a lot of history, hasn't it? A lot of, look, within Frontier, is it, yeah, is it is yeah. a historical band? So it's a, yeah, so it's growing a new generation. With, with Planet Coaster, you guys made a, a, a tool that allowed so much incredible creativity uh, in, mm. in the community. I think, I don't think, I, I certainly couldn't believe some of the stuff that was actually created <laughs> as a result of that no. way back in Alpha when it, we were first talking about it. I actually, I think we do have um, a... A video that kind of is a celebration of some of the community creations uh, from the last year.
can I just can I just say? Um, so one of the reasons no, there's two reasons actually why that was just a pleasure to watch, and it's obviously the ingenuity of all the people actually making that stuff, but also Joe Jacobs and Jim Guthrie's music is just wonderful yeah. to build to and, and work. So I'd, I'd give them a little <laughs> crack in. Yeah, the, the video itself uh, shows off some uh, absolutely incredible creations. I think there's, uh, some of you were actually here today that were featured in that video. Uh, I'm not sure if you were actually in the room with us, but anyway, huge round of applause for those guys and people at home. If you go in there, if you're in the chat, you can say hello. That's me. Similar effects. Amazing. Ridiculous creations. Yeah, well, it's such a joy to see all of these things. They, as people create them and upload them to workshop, they get emailed around the office, and people, there's this like, hush in the room. It's like, oh, this amazing thing's happened, and everybody rushes over, and we kind of fire off a YouTube video. It's, it's incredible, and it's really, really amazing to see the stuff that people have created out of those little tiny building blocks. Yeah, just how, how, how they did it as well, <laughs> you know, the, the sheer amount of time. I saw some amazing stuff they did with the sequencing editor we, we released, and it was just... Well, just almost insanity, like the level of work that's gone into those is unbelievable. It's, yeah. the it's the ingenuity as well, actually. When you look at it, there's, um, there's things I'm really jealous about. Like, obviously, there's the, there's the actual planet, uh, planet coaster itself. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, it's I don't cool. think of that. It's that's called Planet Coaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, but it's actually uh, that when you see things uh, like the Magic Emporium, and it's, it's, it's a working, functional, profitable building in the park. So not only is it beautiful, but you've got something which, you know, even if you're a manager, you can, you, know, you play the game as a manager and you play the sim, you can get that from the sim workshop and just use that and your park is suddenly beautiful. It's, it's, the, it's the lovely kind of, um, I, mean, I didn't, I don't think it's a symbiosis or whatever you want to call it, between the creator and the manager. So it's worked. Wonderfully for Planet Coaster. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that, that kind of, it's, it's that whole authentic theme park experience, isn't it? If you, if you go to a theme park, they have the most wonderful themed shops, but they are shops there to yeah. sell you things, and it just works for that. It's wonderful. Mm. So we do have a lot to, to talk about about what's coming next. So I know that we could probably talk all night about uh, some of the amazing creations people have made. But um, Sam, uh, you have a bit of a reputation. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, no, uh, spoiler, Sam. So, Sam. Oh, mate, I, I resemble that remark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what is uh, so? What is what's coming up? What's next for? Um, so today, um, the everything we've done for the you know past couple of months is well, for longer than that, I think, <laughs> since, mm. since the yeah. dawn of time, basically. Um, <laughs> we've we've all been gearing up to the anniversary update. The free 1.4 anniversary update. 1.3. 1.3. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so that applause cool. for the anniversary update, guys. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. And we've got we've got um, loads of new rides and and management features and um, some awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ed, just carry on. Sorry. Well, no, no. We'll we'll, we'll get to that in, in just a moment. Um, uh, Andy. You have some, uh, some as well. There's going to be management changes coming as part of the anniversary update, isn't there? Yes, yeah, we've, we've got some, some very cool things to announce. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed in an earlier video tonight we had a vendor jumping over the counter of their shop. We have now set vendors free from their shops. They can walk around the park just like any other member of staff. Now, we've done this because all staff now have an energy level, kind of their, 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 they, they do the job, their energy level goes down, and they, they have to recharge. And they can, you see, they can walk around the park, and the reason they need to walk around the park is so that they can get to, this is a really community requested feature. We are really pleased to announce the staff management building is coming to Planet Coaster. Great. So, um, uh, sorry, on but, but, but just on that, um, uh, so it's a much requested feature. And originally it was requested, if you like, as a kind of cosmetic thing, because people wanted to create the back of a lot of buildings. Um, and the thing is, when we make stuff in Planet Coaster, we want to make sure that it extends the gameplay and, and rolls into the simulation whenever we possibly can. So you've not only got a building which is going to you know, be, be, be great for training and energy, but you also you have something which you can clad and customize to whatever you want that building to be. It's a space that you turn into whatever you want. So it just, be, it just extends that creative side too. Mm, there's like a, a strategic sort of level to this as yeah. well about where you place them, how they interact with your, not only with your, your vendors, but your janitors and your, your yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is for, for all, all members of staff now have, now have a stat and they now need to take, that, take their breaks. The, the, um, the uh, staff management building itself uh, is now where you go to train your members of staff. So instead of training them in, within their shop or out, out in the field, they now go back to the staff management building to get trained. And we've kind of, as well as this, so you, you know, 
your staff are in the, in, in the building, but, but if they're in the building, they're not manning your shops, right? So your, your really profitable shops that you need to, to drive your theme park, they, they're now closed. But uh, as you can see from our lovely little Planko vaccine sign here, very nice. But you can now hire extra vendors to roster to these shops to keep them going, or you can move your vendors around. So if you've got a really highly trained vendor and you want to, so you know, if you, and everybody suddenly wants a, a Golfy energy drink, you can send that vendor to that Golfy store to man it, to sell it faster, to, to drive your theme park profit. Very cool. I think you were mentioning as well some, uh, some perks as well that you get. Yeah, that are actually yeah. so up in if your park is, is profitable enough, if you're, if you're making enough cash, you can add extra perks to your staff in the staff building. So you can give a perk for, say, faster training or being a better entertainer and then apply that to the staff who rest up in your building. It does, it does seem like, uh, again, uh, every single time we do an update, we're adding more and more management tweaks and things and updates to, uh, to Planet Coaster. Yeah, Each time it adds a layer of complexity that then comes together and, and it just all works together in a, in a, in a I'm going to use your word, John, symbiotic way. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But is it is something, well, basically, is, is that, is this just one part of? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we always have loads more stuff to talk about. We've got, there'll be live streams in the upcoming weeks where we get to talk about this in even more detail. So keep tuned. We've got loads more to say. Well, we do have a video as well that kind of uh, throws it all together a little bit. Maybe you yeah. can talk us through what we're going to sure. be seeing on the screen. So here we've got a vendor kind of leaping out of his shop, had it, having a walk around the park. I see this time, shut up shop because there's nobody to take over from him. But there's somebody else. Maybe they'll be able to take over. Into the staff management building, kind of coming out refreshed and happy. And then here we go, leaping over the counter and somebody else taking over. We also have one more... One more thing to say tonight about fan management. That is a much requested community feature that's coming soon, and it is picnic benches. Picnic benches are coming to Planet Coaster in the 1.4 update. <laughs> Go on, it's, it, yeah, it's, <laughs> this isn't something that I ever thought I would say on stage, but please, yeah. everybody, a huge round of applause for picnic benches! <laughs> yes! The loudest applause of the night! Why carrot? We can just leave the... Yeah. So yeah. How, how, do they actually, how, how do they actually work? How does it actually play a part in, in, in the management? So, um, just to go into the scene... Right, right and quick. also, uh, it is genuinely... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Every, as, as John said, we, we, we've done it, it's in. Everything we do builds to the simulation. People will remember all the way back to those early concept art shots from before, before the alpha. We, we've now got it in working. Oh, the, way that, the way that it's... They remember. <laughs> the, way that, the way that this is kind of tweaked is so that guests now prefer to, to eat sitting down, so they will buy their food and then go look for somewhere to oh, sit down. Cool. We're also, um, we're, we're not just giving a couple of picnic benches, we're, we're doing one for each theme, so yeah. you can create a variety of picnic benches, as well as little parasols that go over to them, canopies and mm -hmm. so on. So we've gone the whole picnic gamut. I think it's and we can't wait to see what people do with them. No, I think, I think right. it's a thing. When we're working on a feature, um, we, 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 make it, we make it live and put it public when we know that it's a really enjoyable feature to use and it feels like a nice, complete thing. So, yeah, picnic bench. Who'd have thought so much thought went into picnic bench? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hard work. I know. <laughs> it, well, it just it seems to bring it all together. You know, all of these features, the, the staff management building plus the picnic benches, they work together uh, and create that, um, just another element of, of you have to manage where you're placing these things. I totally. Down. I mean, I, mean, I, I lost, um, uh, when we first got, like, rostered staff in, I lost so much time in trying to uh, work out the best routes and the most uh, immediate ways of getting my staff around the park. And this just adds to that. You know, the, it, it, it teases creators into management and, teases, and, and, and vice versa. You know, in the same way, the creators will tease managers into being creators. And you get this really lovely balance to the game. So we're just always going to extend that through. Yeah, I've, I've played it quite a bit with the, with the vendor management yeah. side of things. And it, it does add that level of detail that like feels kind of more like there's more going on under the scene. You know, it's more yes. theme park management stuff, like real sort of theme parks. And then it's, it's really... Um, quite um, easily accessible as well. It's nice and... Um, well, there's nothing more exciting than kind of like playing with, you know, playing with little people, almost like lab rats, so seeing what they're going to do. I don't want to say lab rats. <laughs> but, you know, like, but, you know, you're, you're, you're playing with... You're, you're, you're playing with, with life. You're kind of creating an interesting kind of profitable life. That's the whole point. You, know, you want to make more profit. You can make more things. And, you know, it constantly rolls into that lovely cycle. Yeah. Feel more rides and roller coasters. Yes, well talked about. <laughs> what? So, <coughs> you know, that was actually a segue. You, you mentioned about rides earlier on uh, when we first started here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, we've, have we got any new rides coming to the, to the end of the No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Next question. Um, <laughs> no, no. We, um, so, um, so, obviously, you know, we've been, since launch, I think launch we had, how many, John? 28 long yeah, rides? 28. 28 rides on launch, and then um, it's, you know, 
since then we've almost doubled. But by the time this comes out, which is coming out pretty soon. Yeah, in a year we'd have. Yeah. Free. Free. Completely um, free. <laughs> One point three. <laughs> um, we will hit. We have doubled that number basically. Yeah. So we're we're adding another four new rides, three of which we're going to show tonight. Uh, the fourth one. Can't show. It's a shame. You I know. Show it I know. Spoiler, but it's it is really a really awesome coaster. But um, ride. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's not ready. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> oh my god, ready. But um, <laughs> yeah. So um, can we? Can I, can I talk about the? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I've got some yeah. screenshots. Um, oh, so the first ride we've got basically is the the Wisehorn. Um, this is a kind of more classic vintage uh, fairground ride. These are normally portable kind of uh, rides that they set up at, at fi fairs and. Uh, you know, they kind of, it bolsters out our sort of vintage pack and uh, the vintage yeah, ready for it, huh? collection of rides. And there's, there's the canopy. I mean, that's the, every Me scene that a ride has been waiting canopy. for. Oh, yeah. No, no, John. That's, that's what, that's I, the, I, what, there's I, no I, other I, reason for it. You, John, that was, that was it. No. Oh, God, beards in the night. Wow. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it's, it's got this amazing canopy. Um, it's kind of, you know, you know, inspired by sort of the, the real life things. And um, we always put that same level of attention to detail um, to everything we do. You know, there's all the mechanical elements there, and it, it's got. You know, our, we're getting so much better at the light sequencing now, mm. and at night it looks absolutely stunning. So really, okay. really pleased with that, and the team have done such a great job. Can so. you give me again? What's the, the pronunciation of that one? The wise horn. The wise horn, everybody. Wise. Such a beautiful looking ride. And I know the Panic Coaster people who are here are being just polite, but yeah, I think they are quite, probably quite excited about that as well. So do show your appreciation when you see these things come up. <laughs> it'll, help, um, it'll help some feel good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, next, next one. Um, so the, the next one, you, uh, again, massive community request. Uh, they wanted a water coaster, and we finally uh, managed to suss out how to do one um, <laughs> effectively. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, I'm really, really pleased with this one. This came out really beautiful. The track mm. is absolutely stunning, really well made. Um, again, hats off to the team for that one. And it's it's a yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah thank you. Love this. <laughs> one love. person likes it. Um, <laughs> It's, it's actually stunning. You can create a really sort of in, you know, interesting, cool, sweeping coaster, quite intense. But on the, on the flip side, you can then use it as a, as a gentle ride and have it kind of um, you know, themed around with like animatronics, triggers, and you know, kind of just create this dark ride element. And again, it's lightly themed, so you c it will fit within sort of fairy tale or western or anything like that. So you, you know, it's got a lot of flexibility. And again, which we always try and whenever we build stuff, we always tr try and consider the end user and the players of the game and how flexible they can, they, we can make it. And, and you know, we, we listen to them as much as we can. And again, this is a result of that. You know, it was one of the biggest requested features of the game. And uh, yeah, we put it out there. So. And that is called? Cascade. Cascade. There we go. So, you know, for me, it's a, it's a really nostalgic ride. Because like, maybe, maybe, Maybe I'm the only one, but I think one of my first rides was like a water shoot in a Great Yarmouth. And that's, it feels, it, there's something very comforting and cradling about that ride. It feels very safe. A couple of Suffolk boys. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, but um, we do have uh, the last one to show. Um, and I spoke about this today in uh, my coaster talk. Spoiler, Sam. Spoiled it in his I head. know I did. I, did. <laughs> I, I pretty much did. Um, this one is uh, basically uh, based on a wooden coaster setup, but. Um, it's quite different in the fact it's a more vintage coaster. It's kind of one of the last, uh, oh kind of in the in the collection of gamut of you know we've got hybrids, we've got classic woodens. We wanted side friction. I wanted this a long time ago. If you'd have seen the live streams um, back in the day, you might have seen this on a poster on the wall at the back. So um, it took a long while for us to kind of get to the point where we, we could actually get the configuration right and make it work. And um, Really, really pleased with it. Again, it's another vintage ride. I love these things. They've got such texture and the, the sounds on them sound absolutely fantastic. And um, it's just a beautiful addition to your ride, uh, to your park, and kind of adds, like I say, is, uh, another addition to the vintage pack. And yeah. Lovely rattly coaster, you know, potentially well, dangerous. I think that's know. the thing. It's it, 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 <laughs> yeah, but what, what's so lovely about it is it look, actually, it's, it's one of the few rides, that, well, I didn't say a few, but it looks re it, we've really pulled off the rickety nature of that ride. You know, I've, I've ridden a few who were like that. And uh, and I and I feel scared for people. You know, they, I can feel their fears. Could should do. Yeah, the, the one wooden <laughs> track supports in Plankoto are, are standing, but this one is really, really special. See, this especially mm. kind of get sunset setting through the wooden supports. It looks beautiful. So yeah, great yeah. Addition. When we when we managed to come up the the wooden coaster design, you know, actual layouts of that, and that was the inversions and all the supports, you know, morphing, you know, 
being able to make a procedural wooden coaster was quite a big deal. And you know, weirdly, this one was actually really difficult as well. But we we got there in the end. And like we say, we never we never show anything until it's ready. And nice. you know, yeah. we've got one left, and it will come. Yeah. What's this one called again? Sorry. Uh, hop the gaps. Hop the gaps. Very good. Really, really good. Uh, and, that, and that's kind of that's not all for uh, coasters, is it? As well, you've got some nice customization options. Coming. Yeah, so <coughs> you guys might like this one. Um, if you watch closely, you can actually see um, things changing in front of your very eyes. <laughs> um, so one, the community basically, for a long time, we had it in alpha that you could actually switch coasters on tracks, basically. So any coaster would be on any track, basically. So we kind of looked at it and it was like, well, I want a configuration which is sensible. Um, you can have now change an existing car for another car which has the same configuration on the right track. So on these big box spline tracks, we've got, you know, you, you can swap a flying coaster for an inverted coaster. Um, but you can also go for a, a, a bit more of a bonkers approach if you really want to. And we'll have an override which basically allows you to pretty much place any ride that's technically possible on that track. You know, so swap any car for any yeah. track. And th what that'll do is enhance the existing coaster set we've got at the moment and give more flexibility to players. And you know, you know, we'll see, hopefully see more crazy creations and beautiful um, cinematic experiences based on this sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah really, really pleased about that. Again, we <laughs> it came out, it's, we spoiled it ourselves, didn't we? Yeah, 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 at one no, point. No, I don't know what you're talking about, Sam. I, I don't remember that. don't remember the yeah. uh, at all. It's a difficult challenge, though. It, it must have been a, a to, from a programming point of view. Yeah, yeah we, have, we have to take something that, like, work, that, that we, people see out there working in Alpha, which is basically like, kind of a developer feature where we just enable this to, to kind of, you know, just about workish, but then yeah. when we want to present this to the public to, to get it ready, we, we kind of have to build in other things, and we wrote code to swap the station sections out so that yeah, your yeah. animated stations make sense. So if you're moving from like flawless to, to flying, you actually the stations move too. Yeah, because it's like it's it's quite a complex setup. Those stations are really really mm. um, very complicated affairs, and just it's not a case of just swapping models. There's a lot of things going on in the background, and like the animated stations are a big part of that. So yeah, yeah. really happy about that, and I think hopefully you guys will be. Yeah. Really pleased about that too. So, oh, yeah. it seems as if a lot of the stuff that we're uh, adding to Planet Coaster or have throughout the, the previous updates as well has just unlocked an extra layer of uh, creativity that the, the for the community for the for the players of uh, Planet Coaster. Uh, and I think this uh, this next this next thing we're going to announce is a little bit of a, a bit of a game changer. So. Yeah. So many 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 years ago, I used to love playing Rollercoaster Tycoon Three, and the thing I really really liked doing was creating my own scenarios and sharing them and playing them, mostly just playing them myself. Yeah. So I'm yeah, proud yeah, yeah. to Thanks. somebody. I'm <laughs> proud to announce the Planet Coaster scenario editor is coming in the 1.4 update. <laughs> I'm sure the chat are very pleased with that. Well. I hope so. We've, we've got the scenario editor front and center in our Planet Coaster lineup. This is, this is functionality we've had, obviously, since the, since the beginning of Planet Coaster for development. But these things get hidden away behind debug menus and horrible text files. But while we're presenting you, this is a completely user-friendly tool for you to use. Create your own scenarios, tweak all your values, really get in there with the nitty gritty, and then share it on the Steam Workshop to play with your friends. There we go. Yeah. Nice. I think what's, what's, what's that's enough. I'm never going to stop a clap in like that way. That. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I, but I think you know, for, for, the, for the last year, we've seen um, uh, kind of creators become absolute stars in the community, and that, you know, people, they, get, they get watched, and that, and their, their, their beautiful creations get shared around. And I think this, this, yeah, just sets a game changer. It kind of creates a, an entirely different group of people who actually are going to create probably scenarios which become well known and, and, and well played, and we're going to effectively create a whole bunch of designers within. Uh, the community. So, uh, really excited to see what people are going to do with this. Because, as you say, you know, we've we've, we've rolled lots of disparate uh, kind of tools into one like, beautiful suite to use. To so the point where I, 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 so this, these are the I'll tools the that developers have had to create the scenarios that are in the game, but yeah. packaged up in a way. Yeah, absolutely. You can load up the existing scenarios that we've made in Planet Coaster, and you can just see how we've set them up for everything. You can oh. change your buildable area. You can lock and unlock scenery inside and outside the park boundary. You can change your guest demographics if you want to change how families come to your park or you know, versus teenagers or adults or groups or things. You can change finances. You can change the refund rate multiplier, the amount of money you get back for, for deleting a piece of scenery. You can 
and change your amount of loans that are available. It's like every option that we use to craft plant coaster scenarios is available to, to, to the players. Mm. The, uh, it's a real game changer, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I Not to mention that the, 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 frontier, the frontier design teams are actually really envious of the tools that you've just been given. So yeah, <laughs> well done to you. But I, 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 I've seen this stuff, and I, for me, it feels like as, as complex as Planet yeah. Coaster is, we just made you know, the, the, the usability kind of really it, it nice and easy. But it, you know, this expands the game tenfold for me. You know, I've seen looking through this stuff, I'm like, wow, this is a, a game in itself. Just, just that stuff there. So. Well, like you say, 140,000 plus creations on the workshop uh, in terms of design yeah. buildings and things. So we want to see 140,000 plus uh, yeah. design scenarios. <laughs> Might take a while to play through them, but we've got to get yeah, started, right? I can do them all. I'll do them all tomorrow. <laughs> Sam's going to do them all. They're I want to see insane change. ones. I want to see ones almost impossible. I want you guys to challenge <laughs> me and, and break me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, set the challenge. But that's the thing, that people are going to get known for their, for their fiendish parks or just their, their, their really beautifully the enjoyable theme. scenarios. You know, the kind of finding the hidden secrets for them there. Mm. Sorry. I sense a live stream series. Challenge Sam. <laughs> yeah, bring Writes it. that one bring down. It. Yeah, it's always nice. <laughs> right. uh, awesome stuff. So uh, I think a, a load of stuff coming as part of the anniversary. And, and yeah, there's, there's loads of we could, there's loads of stuff we could talk about. Sorry, there's yep. loads of slides running through in the background. We've got things like research tree is completely customizable. But there's way too much to say on the stage right now. Yeah. So again, tune in to live streams in the coming weeks yeah. where we'll be explaining loads more and showing you lots more of the scenarios in action. And a possible coaster. Another coaster. And a possible another coaster. Fantastic Spoilers. stuff. Spoilers. Yeah. I think we've got one last uh, little video for you as well. It's just a kind of celebration and a little bit of a roundup of the last year of Planet Coaster. Thank you to John Laws, Andrew Chappell, and Sam Denny. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. I think that's uh, exciting stuff. And if you haven't already picked up a copy of Planet Coaster, um, I'm, you know, I think, uh, I think we might have sold a few copies tonight from showing off some of that cool stuff. Um, we've got one last uh, game to talk about here tonight uh, as part of our special content reveals. Uh, so, um, well, finally, let's talk a little bit about Elite Dangerous. the stage to talk about the future of Elite Dangerous, lead designer Sandro Samarco, game director Lawrence Oldham, 
and art director Chris Gregory. Hello, greetings. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Have you had a, a good day so Fantastic far? Fantastic day so far. Yeah, great. And I, uh, I want a laser and dry ice every time I enter. <laughs> that is pretty cool, thing. right? You enjoy, you enjoy that, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, we're all now breathing in noxious gas. Uh, but, uh, I'm sure. It onion be. head. Is, is yeah. any, anyone <laughs> blind? I'm not, I'm <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Are you still there? I can see through this cloud of gas. Uh, awesome. It's been uh, an amazing year, I think, for Elite Dangerous. Well, amazing three years for uh, Elite Dangerous. Uh, the team seems to be as strong as ever. Uh, there are as many of you working on, on it as there ever have yep. been. Yep. Um, is it still as rewarding and exciting to work on now as it was uh, back then when you first started? Uh, absolutely, totally. I, I get to work on an awesome game uh, like Elite Dangerous. It gets released and then we get to keep going back to it and make improvement after dramatic improvement after dramatic improvement. What is not to like? Exactly that. We're like three plus years now. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're three plus years deep now on the, on the project and it's, it's, it just keeps kind of uh, engaging me, I think, and, and the rest of the team uh, to just make it uh, better and better and keep adding new things to the game, really. And it's, it's really great that some of the things that we've been working on for so long <laughs> get to see the light of day, like the Thargoids recently <laughs> getting out, that was really great. And there's loads of other things like that that we can't wait to, to share. So working with a talented and dedicated team, it's always a privilege, and seeing the amazing things that they produce, but also the, the wonderful support and enthusiasm and passion that the community brings to what we do. Many of them <laughs> are with us tonight. Absolutely. I'll see you guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely amazing. And you, you mentioned uh, the talented and dedicated team. And I think we've actually got a little behind the scenes video to play you guys of uh, the team doing what they do best. Elite Dangerous makes it wonderful for me to come to work in the morning because I'm just constantly dealing with people that are so passionate about the game. Everyone is enthusiastic, everyone is committed, everyone's pulling it in the same direction to try and create this huge, expansive, multiplayer space game. Everyone's just working on it because like, they love this game, so we all want to kind of get together and make it the best it can be. It's something that myself and the entire team pour our hearts and souls into, and we just want to keep going. They truly love what they're doing, they truly love making this epic space game. It continues to grow, it continues to surprise you. Elite Dangerous is undergoing constant development. It enables us to just keep making the game better and better. The community is just so passionate, it never fails to surprise me. I'm always amazed by the, the speed and the enthusiasm that people put into their posts and just the, the love they have for the game, it's always very humbling. I love their passion, they have just been constantly supporting us. We look at posts from people, it had so much meaning for them. They're always trying new things and discovering new things that basically make the game constantly fresh and interesting. Lots of exciting stuff is coming and it's going to be incredible seeing everyone's reaction. There's going to be a lot of amazing, interesting experiences. The real awesome stuff and the fun stuff is definitely yet to come. Looking forwards. There's billions of systems out there that could be hiding surprises. Let's go exploring. Um, not to uh, take away from that beautiful video, but there is a, a large amount of me pointing at things in that video. <laughs> we do a lot of pointing in the office. Right, yeah, sure, lots of, lots we didn't want to mention it. Like yeah, yeah, sorry, also yeah, that was a serious pointing problem. Okay. Um, okay, so why don't we... I mean, uh, so much uh, exciting stuff to talk about today. So what does 2018 hold for Elite yep. Dangerous? So we've got an amazing series of updates to talk about tonight for 2018. Mm -hmm. They're kind of built around three kind of principles or three areas. So there's the, the core game which is a Foundations of Elite, it's kind of going to that and building on the Foundations of Elite. Then the, the narrative, so it's expanding the dynamic and engaging narrative that we've got in Elite. And finally, a series of new features that complement those two and build on those two. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so uh, why don't you go into... Uh, so, 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 so we're going to call this new series Beyond. <laughs> As promised, 
an amazing... A road map, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a road map. There you go. Yep, that's it, the amazing road map. It's beautiful detail. Um, so so as, as you can see in the first quarter, we've got our initial large release. So this is obviously going to bring some of the new core improvements, expanding the narrative, and some of the new features. But this is just a stepping stone towards a much larger update that we're putting out in quarter four. Between those, we've got two really great content updates, which are going to bring you new ships, missions, scenarios. They're going to kind of add more content, more narrative that you can engage in, whilst the main bulk of the team is focusing on some of the very cool and exciting features that we're going to be putting into quarter four that we'll be discussing later on this evening. Fantastic, thank you, Lance. So, so uh, Sandy, why don't we go into some detail? Yeah, so okay. what's coming first of all? <laughs> we like to do things uh, chronologically uh, in the quarter one update. So, yeah, this first update. <coughs> so, as well as a lot of wizardry that's going on under the hood for the long-term benefit of, game, of the game, uh, we're going to see a, a bunch of some really cool quality of life improvements to core gameplay. So, non-exhaustive list, <laughs> kind of off the top of my head, maybe not. <laughs> We've got things like uh, engineering. We're going to make sure that every time you craft and upgrade an engineer, it's always better than what you've currently got. We're going to have... Uh, yeah, absolutely. And more. And more. Yeah. So we've got uh, crime and punishment. We're going to give system authority ships some real uh, teeth and tactics so they can much better support the concept of consequence for criminality across human space. Uh, trade. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if these guys just followed you around applauding everything that yeah. you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trade, we're going to give you access to much better trade data, a much more accurate trade data, so you can make much more informed decisions when you're trying to buy low and sell high. Um, and wings, uh, we're going to introduce some rather challenging wing missions that you can take on with your friends as a team. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I like that. Yep. Really, uh, really looking forward to uh, getting uh, engaged in the community uh, about these features and more in the days and months to come. Yeah, so not, very exciting. Not exhaustive list, like you said, and uh, not, it's not just the, the feel uh, of really dangerous. Not just this. Like we said, like Lawrence said, we're going in and we're looking at improving the core experience of Elite Dangerous. We're also looking at adding new features and continuing the narrative, but also the the, the look of Elite sure. Dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, first of all, congratulations to the art team for the look of, of Elite Dangerous. It's just. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Really hard. Uh, it's part of what makes Elite so special. So, one of the really great things about the continued <laughs> pillow oh, well. development of Elite is that we, uh, we get to go back and we get to polish some of our assets. And as you can see here, we'll be doing that with our planetary tech uh, starting from the first update next year. Uh, and what we'll be doing with that. As you can see here, this is uh, work in progress stuff, uh, but it's all building towards the end release. And what we'll be doing is uh, revisiting the, the shaders and the graphs uh, that produce our planets. And we'll be uh, bringing out uh, some of the contrast and the details in there that's already in the, in the system, but also adding more, so you'll get a rich, more detailed look. Uh, we'll also be adding a wider variety of color variation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <Woo -hoo. laughs> to the simulation. <laughs> And uh, we're pleased to say you'll be seeing that variation throughout the galaxy from update one. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> amazing, 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 right. <clears throat> Good stuff. So, um, let's talk about some of the narrative then. Yeah. Like you say, is the, the narrative was an important part of uh, Lead Dangerous Horizons and uh, 2.4. Yeah. Um, so, is that narrative going to continue yeah. throughout um, the Beyond series of updates? Absolutely. So, as I said, one of the three areas that we're looking into is narrative. Narrative is, is, is core to that. Um, it's also one of the things that Dave and the team are most passionate in, in, and engaged in. Um, so, having got that sorted out, Elite has a unique yeah. narrative. Experience. There are every, so many people are playing it, but everybody that plays it, whatever platform they're on, whatever mode they're in, they're all progressing and engaging in the narrative, whether that's through CGs, Community Gold, Grand Sim, or things that they find, puzzles that they're solving out there. Everybody's contributing to this amazing narrative web that we're, that we're, that's being built and contributed to. Um, so I think we've got a little bit of yeah, footage absolutely. of people exploring one of, these, one of these narrative threads, as it were. Take a look.
So, a bit of a, a recap. A recap, really, of, of some of the narrative threads yeah. that have happened so, uh, recently. So, yeah, absolutely. What you saw there was some community members and groups like Canon going out and exploring these ancient ruins that were kind of hosted by this race called the Guardians and starting to unravel some of the story. Now, this is just a single thread in a whole host of threads that are intertwined and linked together that, that's in Elite. And for the Beyond series, update one, we're actually looking at obviously continuing the, the, the story of, of the Guardians. Yeah, and uh, it's also sort of a, yeah. a, a personal progression. So, so, well. that's, so there's one side of it. So obviously when we're talking about narrative, we're talking not about just words, we're talking about experiences, we're talking about people engaging in groups, having CGs, going out there hunting, working together, un uncovering things. But one of the great things that we're, we're looking at adding into this is not only will these people be progressing the kind of global narrative elite, we're now going to be unlocking a personal narrative when you go into these things. So I think we've got some images of some of the sort of technologies that you may well be able to a tantalizing peek at some of the things <laughs> you might be unlocking in these new personal narratives that we're going to be bringing, we're bringing to Elite. Now, who knows what on earth these things do, <laughs> but I'm sure that you'll be interested to play with them when they arrive. Yeah, yeah uh, I think this is so fascinating. Amazing, amazing stuff. So, so it does seem like there's a, a lot of uh, new content, a new story content, like you say, the personal progression, the personal narrative, unlocking awesome new cool stuff. Um, uh, but that's, again, seems like quite a lot of story going into Galnet. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of stories, a lot of threads in Elite, and as Lawrence has alluded to, there's going to get a heck of a lot more. Um, People thought we were done with the Guardians. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so we're always, looking at, we're always really interested in looking at new ways of delivering um, that information to the players within the game, um, which is why we're really, I'm really pleased that we're getting another cool new feature, which I think it can probably just speak for itself. <laughs> Greetings, Commanders. For over a century, the Galnet News Agency has been bringing news to the entire galaxy. Now, we are introducing a new feature. Galnet Audio. Galactic leaders have declared a galaxy-wide state of emergency in response to the rapidly escalating Thargoid threat. A number of ships and outposts have been attacked in recent days, resulting in a high number of casualties. Security patrols have been stepped up throughout core systems, and civilians are being advised to avoid all non-essential travel. Both the Federal President and the Emperor are expected to make public statements soon. Galnet Audio. Your galaxy in focus. <laughs> so, as the video uh, kind of insinuates there, um, you'll be able to listen to Galnet Audio as you fly about on your ship doing whatever it is that you use. A absolutely. Uh, it's really important when we get a feature like this that we, that we get maximum usage out of it. So, what do you, you're, you're in a cockpit all the time. Yeah? You're always flying a ship. So, you'll be able to fire this bad boy up and uh, off it will try. Yeah, whilst you're playing. Fantastic. Great news. Absolutely. So... Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of uh, ships, as we were, <laughs> ships, <laughs> like ships, uh, you spend a lot of time in your ships, uh, Chris, uh, as part of the Beyond series of updates. Are we going to see any more ships? Absolutely. So it's great to be able to say that we'll be seeing a lot more ships in the coming updates. And uh, the <laughs> <laughs> no, please. so the uh, the ships and the hardware in the game are definitely some of my favourite things to work on. And it's uh, really good to work with the, uh, the really talented concept artists, uh, texture artists, model artists, to uh, come up with the look and, and the feel of the, uh, the ships, trying to make them as different as possible, trying to make each one as unique as possible. And then also the designers to come up with the actual role of the ship, what does it do, what makes it special. Uh, VFX audio, giving it the character that it needs as well. They do a, a sterling job. So it's really a, a collaborative thing when, when we make ships, and it's great to say that we're getting, we're getting more of those coming. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, we thought we might take a look at some of those ships. Well, before um, we do, maybe we should ask everybody here. Oh, no, it's okay. too late. <laughs> hey, uh, keep me to it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay, so uh, that is a grey render of a ship that we are calling the Chieftain. 
and uh, we're really pleased with the look. Uh, so this is kind of work in progress mesh. Uh, we wanted to bring it along today to give a sneak peek. Uh, it's untextured, um, and it's uh, not got any of the shaders on there that it will end up having in game. So we, we look forward to sort of sharing the development process on that in the coming months. Um, but maybe it would be good to go into a little backstory about how it fits into the narrative Indeed. as well. Um, so uh, this is quite a unique ship in that it is a, it's an answer really to uh, the fact that the universe has recently gotten a little more dangerous uh, with the return of the Thargoids, um, who you guys have been having a, a fun time with recently. <laughs> and uh, basically what it is, is the Alliance have partnered with uh, Lacom, uh, one of our ship manufacturers. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they've, been, they've been working on these ships. Um, and what it, what it kind of combines, I think, is the, the existing aesthetic that we had with the previous Lake on ships, uh, but with a slightly more military kind of aggressive feel. And we're really pleased with them. We can't wait uh, to, to get people flying them. Yeah, fantastic. Round of applause, please, for the Chieftain. <laughs> I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And of course, you did mention the alliance uh, word there as well. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, you did. Yeah, but, th but this ship uh, is completely new to the elite law. Uh, this ship and all of the other alliance ships uh, that will be coming in the update. Cause <laughs> <laughs> this is not just the, uh, the only one there. Um, right. All of those ships are completely new designs, uh, names to the elite, uh, to the elite universe. However, uh, the elite uh, Galaxy and narrative is, uh, is rich and, and uh, there's lots of history there and occasionally we like to dive back into that history mm. and uh, we like to uh, resurrect one of the older designs and give it a bit of polish, uh, come up with uh, colouring in between the lines to, mm -hmm. to work out what that's going to look like for the modern <laughs> ship. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I I think that's called the crate. <laughs> right, okay, cool. Um, well, I've got, I'm glad we got that right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, I think we've got some, uh, some images of what we're looking at with the crate. So, uh, again, this is a, uh, a rough block out. It's, uh, it's not quite as uh, worked up as the one that you saw for the Chieftain. But again, we wanted to bring it along just to give a little snapshot of where we're thinking of going with it. We think it's got some really nice features. It's got very unique cockpit placement that we're very pleased with. Really unique view from the front and uh, the hardware and uh, hard point placement is, is kind of cool too. So uh, look, looking forward to flying that next year. Absolutely. So please, round of applause, please. Show some appreciation. <laughs> And there are a few commanders who will be very, very pleased uh, to hear about that announcement. Um, so after the quarter one update, um, as Lawrence mentioned before, yep. there's then a couple of smaller updates in yeah. between. Quarter yeah, so those obviously, as I said before, going to bring you the new ships, new scenarios, new missions, and, and kind of progress the narrative as well. So those will be really engaging and good beats. Yeah, in those yeah. couple of smaller updates in between. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Before one. leading up to the three. Great, okay. And then, uh, well, then it's quarter four uh, update, which is arguably the, uh, the largest absolutely. update yeah. that we're doing, great. Right? Uh, I think Sandy <laughs> may have some detail about what might be coming. Right, yeah, the, uh, the quarter four update. Um, new feature time! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we all know that uh, players love working together, right? Lots of really awesome player groups out there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new organisational structure for player groups that we're calling squadrons. So, uh, yeah. So squadrons uh, are... You, you're going to be able to create your own squadron. We're going to give you the tools uh, to manage the membership of it and the hierarchy of it. And what squadrons are going to bring uh, to the game and bring to your, to your team um, is, it, is enhanced communications options. So it's going to really, it's going to really um, make uh, coordinating your efforts as a group a whole lot easier, whether you're completing community goals or whether you're supporting your power in power play or, or just manipulating the background simulation. The whole experience, hopefully, is going to get a lot slicker, a lot more efficient and a lot more fun. So we're really looking forward to bringing, bringing that into the game. However... Just as an extra little treat, um, we're going to allow squadrons to purchase their own fleet carriers. So these are... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, these really large vessels, um, these really large dockable vessels, um, are going to act as a mobile base of operations for squadrons where its members can uh, refuel, uh, rearm and respawn. So... Hopefully it's going to be quite a bit of fun. Popular. <laughs> 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 
So uh, we could have stopped there, um, <laughs> apparently. Um, but uh, there are some other areas of the game that's getting some love too. Yeah, th we, we, we're kind of silly and we like uh, trying to do too much. So uh, obviously the quarter four update and the, the Beyond series updates, uh, one of the focuses is, is, is core gameplay. So to that end, uh, we're going to take a look at one of the uh, features that's been in the game um, early on, from, from pretty much from the beginning, which is mining. We're going to give mining some love and attention. So uh, we're going to improve the way that you uh, ex uh, detect and extract resources when you're mining. In effect, we're going to give you a kind of miner's toolkit of modules and capabilities, give you options and varieties and choice um, when you're out there in the black. Um, importantly, what, we, what we're going to try and invoke um, is the feeling of Wild West prospecting. Now, whether that's through jeopardy, through like crises and challenges, unforeseen cropping up, cropping up when you're out there in the black trying to get the rewards, or through the concept of you know, striking, striking it big, striking it rich, um, you know, hitting the mother load, uh, deep core blasting an entire special asteroid, for example, to get a bonanza of rewards. So the end result, hopefully, is going is to make mining um, a fully-fledged fully fledged feature uh, that players can aspire to progress through and, importantly, have a lot of fun in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay whilst they're doing so. Yeah. Chris, you mentioned, um, uh, I feel like I keep cutting the applause off. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you mentioned um, planetary tech earlier in quarter one, but the art team are always hard at work and making improvements. You've got a, um, a target that you're trying to sort of hit for quarter four as well. Absolutely. So the stuff that we uh, spoke about earlier is really uh, just the beginning of a, a process that we're going to undertake throughout the year. Um, we want to get as much out as soon as we can, so there'll be some coming in the, the first update. But for the final update of the year, uh, we have this art target. Uh, so uh, this, to be very clear, is concept art. Uh, it's painted over the top of some of our landscapes. And what our artists have done here is basically provided us with a roadmap, really, for where we want to get to with the look of our planets. And uh, that's really useful for us because it really focuses us on getting the right things into the game uh, to, to, to enhance them and, and uh, really make them even better than they are now. Uh, so I think it'd be useful to just go into a little bit of the uh, techniques that we're going to use to try and do justice to this piece of art. Uh, so we will be uh, getting in a improved lighting model for the game. And this will benefit not just the planetary uh, aspects of the game, but also it's global. So that's going to make lighting in space much better as well. Um, so that, I think, is really, a really positive thing. Uh, we'll also be looking at an improvement to what we call our scatter rock system. And that is the, uh, the technique that we use to sort of uh, populate the planet's surface with boulders and, that and the like. And what we're going to be doing with that is uh, really pushing it and uh, getting a greater variety of size and shape and scale and different forms in there to really uh, make the environments uh, a lot more compelling to, to navigate and a lot prettier as well. Fantastic. Um, and we'll also be looking at uh, localized uh, ambient effects uh, for fog and vapor. And we really think that that's going to bring an increased depth uh, to, the, to the visuals that you'll be getting when you're, when you're exploring our planets. Fantastic news. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> very good. good. Fog and vapor. Um, <coughs> Chris, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you just used the word exploring. I did, on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On board. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, but in all seriousness, I think this next thing that Lawrence is going to tell us about, there's a, there's a large uh, part of our community that um, have been waiting for some love for, for quite a while, and it's the explorers out there. So this, uh, so Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. So ex exploration, has always, exploration has always been fundamental to Elite. It's one of the cores. Vast galaxy, so much to see, so much to do, so much to find. So as with mining, we're going to go back and add and build on the systems, the processes, and the features we're putting in the game, so that, again, you can have a whole suite of different activities that are going to be much more engaging and much more focused around how you find stuff out there in the galaxy. Obviously, this is great, not just for explorers, but for anybody that's in the game that's looking for something. So missions, whether it's commodities or resources, it's going to really help direct and focus and lift the game. Um, so not just the core features, but also new features on top of that. We're looking at adding a codex. So the codex will log your discoveries and the things that you've found, but will also <laughs> act as will also act as a kind of encyclopedia. So giving more depth and context to the things that you've found and also possibly hinting at other things that you might be able to find out there. Right. 
So, well, I, I was just going to, really quickly, if you don't mind me, in, so I think the, the Codex is a really, really, really exciting thing. And as you said, it's uh, going to be, I'm just excited to fill that up, you know, for, you know tick all those boxes off. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's super exciting. And also using those new exploration tools, like you said, to, to go and do that. Combining all that up, it, it's, it's super exciting. And I don't know if you have any so, more to add. So, so, well, obviously, when what are explorers interested in? <laughs> they're, they're interested in finding new things. So, obviously, this comes with a host of new content, so new phenomenon, new anomalies that are going to be out there in the black for you guys to go and find and experience. I think that's <laughs> genuinely going to be changing up the way that we, we explore the galaxy in Elite Dangerous. Yeah, and what is out there to find. Absolutely. Is. Fantastic. That's very, very, very exciting in stuff. I, I mean, uh, that's, uh, that is a lot of stuff as well. I mean, we've, we've, we've not even covered everything that's going to be in the Beyond series of updates uh, in what we've talked about today. No, no, absolutely. These are just some of the great and really exciting features that we're looking forward to bringing you guys in the Beyond series of updates. 2018. Yeah, and I think it's worth uh, mentioning to uh, you here as well and everybody at home uh, that everything that we've talked about in today's presentation uh, will be coming to all Elite Dangerous Horizons players for, well, absolutely free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy! <laughs> <laughs> And it does all sound absolutely incredible, and I'm sure you guys and everybody at home and the team are so very, very excited to tell you more about it in lots more details and, uh, and, and as more details come out that we, can, that we can share with you guys about all these different features and everything that's coming. Uh, the galaxy is a very uh, exciting place, and it's, it's going to get even more exciting and even more dangerous as well. Absolutely. But do you remember as well that 2.4 The Return has, because that's not even it, like 2.4 The Return has only just started as well. Uh, it, and, and as the narrative progresses, it's going to get even more and more interesting. I think actually, well, let's take a look at a sneak peek at what's coming up uh, in the next few weeks with 2.4. Thank you so much. A huge thank you to Sandy Samarco, <laughs> Lawrence Oldham, and Chris Gregory. Thank you, guys. So that is, uh, well, yeah, thank you. That's, that's kind of... That's it for today's uh, special content reveals. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to all of the developers that we've had here out today. So please, uh, one last time, a huge round of applause for the Jurassic World Evolution developers. <laughs> the guys from Planet Coaster. And of course, Elite Dangerous. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to say uh, a huge thank you. Obviously, this is our... Uh, first ever Frontier Expo. FX17 is a very special uh, thing for us. And I, I couldn't imagine a better group of people to share it with than you guys here as well in the audience. So to everybody at home, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> We literally couldn't do it, uh, couldn't do this without, without you guys in our community. So to everybody at home and to everybody in here, please give yourselves a huge round of applause. As I said before, like, as with uh, all of the games, Planet Coast, Jurassic World Evolution, and Elite Dangerous, we actually do have uh, a lot more to share with you in the coming months, and we can't wait to continue on this absolutely epic journey with you guys. So we'll see you soon. <laughs>